and we're live. And we're good morning. Live. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Uh, we are live with Virtual Jock. My name is Alexa Live, and I'm very happy to see all of you here. With my in my virtual studio here, I have Victor. Victor, say hi to our viewers. Hello, Internet. How are you doing today? Uh, hello, Oleg. And uh, it's great to be here again at the Virtual Jack. It's, it is my, like, uh, what, fourth appearance, right? Uh, some people might say that about some favoritism uh, in, uh, in, uh, <laughs> in the Russian connections. But uh, this is some session that you actually requested after my previous talk when I did for Kafka, right, Oleg? Excellent, excellent, and very right. Yeah, uh, in summer, in August, I think you had the session about Kafka in general, the introduction to Kafka, and how yeah. people can start using that. The streaming platform, and people asked tons of questions about Kafka streams and how to consume data with a better API or something like this. And we figured out that it would be prudent to invite you once again in a couple of months. So we waited, not to be accused of having the connections. Uh, connections and favoritism. Favoritism and the uh, Russian connections. No, the one I'm trying to say, I guess we were just busy. Uh, how was your How was your Java one or, or uh, pardon me, uh, Oracle Code one? Oracle Code one. Yeah, I had a. Did you, a, did you do uh, like a recap uh, type of thing for Virtual Jug? Um, like I haven't. I haven't because after that I was six weeks on the road, with just a couple of days home here and there. So yeah. I'm looking forward to doing that maybe now. Anyway, we're live. I think we have people in the chat somewhere uh, showing thumbs ups that they can see stuff. If you cannot see stuff, you please can. write you, in the Slack. If you have, yeah, if you, if you, I'm actually in Slack and you can uh, tag me if you have some particular questions, but uh, uh, I kill Slack right now in order to preserve some of the bandwidth and the performers of my uh, tiny laptop. <laughs> so, uh, Oleg, uh, sorry, again, I am uh, keep uh, hijacking your, yeah. your show. No worries. This is what no I worries. do. No worries. Let me just quickly go through a couple of slides here for this session, uh, and then we're going to start with Kafka. So today's session is Rethinking Stream Processing with Kafka Streams and KSQL by Viktor Gamov, who you can find in the internet by Gamusa. He will be absolutely delighted to answer all your questions. If you don't have a chance to ask them currently during the session, you can find him later, and he will be uh, he will be a very pleasant person to to talk to online. Oh, thank you. Alex. If you can That's find him, if you can find him on, offline, he will be as great as well. But uh, online might be easier. So Victor is of course a developer advocate for Confluent, the company which which. Uh, develops Kafka platform. And I'm sure he will talk a little bit about that uh, in a moment. But yeah, you should know that he's the world, one of the most known uh, experts in the world about Kafka. Oh, so, again, it's very kind to hear it once again. Thank you. Ex excellent. So my, I myself am a developer advocate for Project Graal VM at Oracle Labs. It's a virtual machine that can run programs in different languages, you should check it out if you haven't heard of it yet. It would be amazing and it would make my day, definitely. Uh, if you're not a member of Virtual Jug yet and you're just watching us on YouTube or you just saw uh, a sneaky tweet by somebody who is watching the session, Virtual Jug is an online Java user group and you can join that absolutely for free. Uh, there is a meetup.com uh, community. You can join that, you will receive uh, invites to the future events and it's going to be awesome and we're going to grow this community further and we will be nice and excellent to each other uh so meetup.com slash virtual jack and smash that join this group button and if you are how watching many, the session, how many currently members do we have at the virtual jack like do you have any statistics like uh, how fast uh, it's growing this year uh i'm not sure how fast it's growing but it's uh, 15,000 people, I think. Wow, uh, 15,000 uh, so, people. Imagine that, guys. This is uh, this is a heck of a community, yeah. right? And yes, and every one of you are equally important to us. So uh, the communication and discussion about the session happens in the virtual jerk Slack in the channel live session. If you type in that URL, uh, 
you can get there or you can get there from the website. And please share this group and share the session. And if you have any feedback, just reach out to us on Twitter, either at Virtual Jug or to me personally, at Shalaev. And we'll, happy, we'll be happy to make this or the next events even better. So with all those formalities out of the way, let me let me just go back and give control back to Victor. All right. Uh, so now let me start my screen sharing. Now I need to remember how to do this. Uh, as we know, this is not the easiest tool to use. But like, stop, uh, stop uh, bragging about this. Um, quickly, quickly switch to this one and uh, ready to share. All right. Um, I can see let me know if you can see anything. Yeah, I can see a screen. Fantastic. I can hear you well. So it's all up to you. If we will have any questions, I will try to ask you during the portion moment when you have a pause. All right. So and uh, let me start with some slides. Right. <laughs> Hi. Uh, and uh, I'm as I mentioned, I incredibly, incredibly honored to get back uh, to uh, Virtual Jack and to talk about things that. Apparently, many people are finding important. This is what I usually do. I I try to trying to help people with the questions and uh, with their uh, things that important to them. Uh, and apparently, the topic about developing streams uh, stream processing applications uh, it resonated with uh, with communities. So um, it's a it's a part two of my talk uh, when I was started with introduction in of a stream platform, uh, Apache Kafka stream platform. I think if you uh, you need to go to YouTube and subscribe to Vijag channel, and you can find the previous recordings there. Um, in case of you want to refresh um, your your knowledge, and um, you can always tweet at me. You will find my Twitter handle uh, at the Gamusa, as I like mentioned. This is uh, this is my Twitter handle. Uh, if you can find me there, um, I gladly help uh, with answering any questions if you might have after the session or during the session or whatnot. So, and today I will talk about two things: uh, Kafka streams and KSQL. Uh, I would say that uh, this is most of the uh, developer. Um, focused talk where we're going to be talking about some uh, developer API for, for Java developers. But fear not, if you're not a Java developer, um, obviously virtual jug, it's all about Java community, but it's not, not necessarily, we, you know, we welcome to, uh, welcome any, um, any developer with different languages. So this YK SQL also comes into play and it allows to use, uh, the stream processing capabilities that I will show today not only from, from Java. So um, this is uh, some of the iterations of, of this talk. One of the recent iterations, what I did this, it was a Kafka Summit, which is uh, one of the events where we uh, gather a community around Kafka, community, uh, customers, all people around stream platforms. So when I was preparing this talk for Kafka Summit, I was asking uh, people in Twitter so um, they can, um, they can send me their questions, their uh, problems around uh, stream processing, around Kafka streams, in order for me to prepare a uh, beginning level talk. Because many of you are familiar with the concept of uh, um, the curse of knowledge. When you think uh, you know something, then uh, you think other people would know this as well. So in order for me to get back to my roots and remember all the um, hurdle that uh, people might uh, feel uh, start learning this framework um, I, I started this kind of survey so this talk was um, was created around uh, responses that I get from from the community um, just a quick refresher uh, to the things what we're going to discuss and we're going to be talking about uh, stream processing and uh, essentially stream processing or streaming it's a um, set of tools uh, set of programming components that allows to deal with events, facts, uh, as they move. So we're not talking about some of the, you know, accumulation of the data in performance uh, computation, you know, end of day, end of hour, end of week. Uh, we rather consider 
this kind of uh, this kind of approach, like a batch approach, is very um, one of the case of stream processing where we have uh, your data stream is bounded to beginning to the end. But in general, with streaming, we're dealing with um, unlimited, unbound uh, stream of events or stream of facts, sequence of facts, if you will like. One of the good examples uh, these days massively popular um, the mobile devices that can generate thousands of millions of events and uh, the Kafka allows to provide the buffer to collect this data and start performing some of the computation. So streaming platform based on Kafka and uh, uh, Kafka streams provides continuous computation capabilities for for applications. So as your events from your mobile devices, for your IoT devices, for different sensors, for different data, uh, from different uh, data sources, it can be not necessarily um, like mobile devices. It can be the streams of changes, events from database, and uh, and uh, so far and so on. So Kafka provides high throughput uh, capabilities in order to um, collect this data, store the data for some time. So for continuous computation, we're going to be focusing on Kafka Streams application and uh, mostly in Java. Uh, and uh, as a result, um, as a result, we can publish this result somewhere else. We can publish the result back to Kafka because Kafka provides also uh, streaming capabilities, but also storage capabilities. Or um, we can uh, serve it directly to any data source that are available in order to perform uh, the querying, performing some other aspects of uh, data wrangling, I would say. So is, as, you, as you can imagine, this picture is a representation of the CAP architecture. CAP architecture is the next generation of the data, um, data processing pipelines that was originated from a Lambda architecture, where we have a two layers, uh, a batch layer and the speed layer. Uh, and the Kappa architecture eliminated uh, the batch layer and focus on streaming layer only. So uh, events are coming through the Kafka. We have an application that does continuous computation and a result will be stored somewhere where it can be accessed through application. Or we'll see how, how it goes next. Now, um, I think uh, one of the things that can explain the stream processing to you, if you never uh, done this before, it just uh, use the Unix analogy. You can take a uh, standard input uh, of uh, the file. We start pumping this into the command that will do processing. So in this case, our uh, ksql grep, grep ksql, this is a command that will be um, that will be executing all this operation. After that, result of this operation would be pipe through uh, another command that does processing, and the result would be output to um, standard output, which would be transformed to the file. So if we bring the Kafka, uh, Kafka world here, Kafka provides your uh, piping capabilities. You're reading, you're writing through Kafka. There's connect API that allow you to uh, connect uh, individual data sources or like very common uh, data sources that are available out there. And uh, stream processing provides actual computation. Uh, from perspective of uh, programming component, you learn from the previous session that there is Kafka brokers that will use uh, Zookeeper nodes in order to uh, store some of the metadata. Applications will use native uh, uh, client library to connect. Schema registry is also an important component because sometimes we don't need to um, store all metadata, like all the description of the data or schema about the data in payload itself. We can extract this because usually it's schema is uh, repetitive, so you don't need to um, over and over have it in uh, one place. Uh, um, in, in part of your payload. So you can extract the schema, store the schema in schema registry and store only bytes inside Kafka. Um, the Kafka Streams, which is application framework that we'll be focusing today, um, has this uh, integration with schema registry as well. So you can use the same approach um, with your uh, Kafka Streams applications. Kafka Connect, it's another component. It's another separate server that runs uh, with set of connectors that can um, uh, write data into Kafka and read data to Kafka. Um, uh, in some languages, there are no uh, native Kafka client support, which puzzles me. Uh, and uh, right now, it's very difficult to find actual language 
that doesn't have native Kafka support, but still, uh, schema uh, REST proxy provides the way how you can uh, connect to Kafka to consume data and produce data uh, through REST. Now, this is streaming platform. We already uh, you already know all these components. Um, as you can see, that uh, Kafka brokers are is a separate separate entity here. Your applications are not running on the broker side. Your uh, Kafka Streams application are not running on the broker side. Your Kafka Connect components are not running on uh, broker side and so far and so on. So brokers will be responsible for dealing with data as it moves um, and the rest of the components will consume this data. Now, let's switch back to some of the uh, feedback that I'm receiving in Twitter meanwhile. So Vladimir is asking, uh, what was the motivation um, of using streams at all? Because um, from the previous slide, you saw that uh, we can use native library and native library provides you uh, pops up methods and uh, you can subscribe to these messages and process message as they go. So, and which, which uh, brings uh, some of the um, uh, debate about uh, developing a framework and usually you know conversation uh, starts with okay so why i need to use some opinionated framework where i can develop my own framework because i feel it's overkill uh, for me to start using uh, this uh, kafka streams for some reason or like it's gonna be too high level so let me write my own framework and this is why uh, this framework would be much better but uh, some of the things needs to be considered when you develop a stream processing framework and some of the things that already was solved with uh, Kafka streams and, and not only Kafka streams because there are all different uh, stream processing frameworks available. Um, but in this particular case, I'm focusing on Kafka streams mostly. So pretty much when you design the framework, what kind of um, requirements you have in mind or you need to take into consideration when you have stream processing framework or when you're choosing, it needs to be scalable. So you want to um, have ability to scale up and scale down in order to if the load will increase, how you can, um, how we can uh, deal with this at, uh, at scale so we can uh, perform uh, massive computations. Um, elasticity of the framework, um, when you scale up and scale down, usually you're doing this to uh, preserve some of the bill uh, from uh, your cloud provider. Um, uh, for example, you want to start uh, processing more messages um, uh, and uh, when your load will go down, you just you know shut down this node. Um, and in order to do this, the framework needs to support elasticity and support um, ways how you can scale up and scale down. Uh, fault tolerant, you don't want to lose data. You don't want to, uh, in case of failures, um, you don't want to uh, start recomputation over and over again. So a framework needs to have uh, fault uh, tolerant capabilities. Um, the, in 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 most cases, it will require storing some of the state of computation. So when we when I showed you uh, this example with grep and uh, tr commands, um, this uh, these two commands are examples of uh, so called uh, stateless stream processing, meaning that uh, you don't need to have a result of your previous computation in order to calculate uh, uh, results. In, uh, in current computation. So um, a, a stateful stream processing allows you to um, accumulate some of the data, accumulate some of the results. And um, every time when you're trying to do things like uh, sum, uh, count, um, any type of, um, any type of uh, grouping, uh, aggregation. So you need to store the state because in order to cal cal calculate sum, for example, you need to have uh, ability or you need to have a story. You need to you need to have result from the previous uh, pre previous step. So it's also important um, and uh, obviously distributed um, distributed uh, component. So yes, you can write your own framework. Yes, uh, you can start with low level concepts. And uh, on the end of the session, I will show the slides that. Um, sums up things in um, in a fashion that you will understand which uh, framework to choose and when. Uh, but for now, uh, you need to keep in mind that um, it is 
it is possible and uh, you need to be more or less opinionated about the, about the things um however rather than kind of starting from scratch with some low level things uh, maybe um start talking in the abstraction layer for example uh, rather than dealing with individual message just want to have a stream of events how to process it and uh, what to do next so similar similar thing that like why you would use uh, these days today um iterate over collection using iterator or using just uh, uh, java streams uh, java streams provides very nice way they do the same thing uh, but uh, you can do uh, more things with less more f things are efficiently uh, with uh, java streams api rather than just do collection iterator uh, dot next okay um i like do we have any questions so far um or or we're good to go for now no nope, there are no questions in chat okay so it, meaning that everything is clear or nothing is clear so guys don't uh don't hesitate if you have any questions but still we it, it's intro so let's let's go further now so one of the things that uh Rahul was asking is uh first of all what's the impact of changing streaming names some of the things that was kind of like bother him and how the parallelism depends on the kafka topic and partition why adding more nodes and streams apps then uh the adding more nodes on your stream processing app uh, is useless um, if you have less partition. Okay, this is a fantastic question that also can bring us some of the uh, conversation that we had in the past. <clears throat> um, because Kafka stream stands on the shoulders of giants and uh, these giants are um, uh, producers and, and consumers. So your Kafka streams apps includes producer and consumer. You're, you're reading data from Kafka, you're writing data back to Kafka. So that's why some of the refresher on uh, oral architecture is also important. Now, uh, data will be written into this uh, transaction log. Data will be written into the end of this file. Uh, new data will be constantly appending to the um, to the end of the file. Um, different consumers can read data from uh, from this file with their own speed. So, if I will be um, a slow reader like um, like Fred, um, I will be reading this data from uh, from very beginning very long time uh sally uh, on the contrary has the uh, ability to read data faster um and george fred and sally they can have different uh different algorithm the way how they read this data and uh, different algorithm what kind of information they want to have for example sally maybe she, she's interested in some references of um, particular character so she doesn't need to have any stateful processing thread on the contrary maybe collecting the words so same thing with kafka applications um that you uh, read data from kafka um, they can have different algorithms, but they operate on the same data. Uh, we can uh, get access to different offsets, so we can do prefetch um, in order to have a batching, a better performance, um, as, um, so far and so on. And uh, this is very scalable architecture. Um, th there should be question. There should be question in the chat saying that will it scale? Um, and it, it is, it is, uh, it is scales, and uh, it allows to perform many producers that they data can be produced to uh, to this multiple topics topics of partition and uh, many broker machines available that will um, um, will will make sure that uh, data will be uh, safely stored they're replicated and so far and so on also consumers I remember our friend uh, Sally and George from the previous uh, previous slide so you can read this uh, from um, from this uh, and this architecture is designed is designed to be uh, highly scalable on reads kafka uh, has a reference to uh, to literature anyway now important component here uh, consume group coordinator this is a uh, response it is responsible for sharing load or assigning load to individual nodes and the kafka streams applications also um, will have a consumer underneath and this consumer will have um, a consumer a group um, that will be responsible for for uh, reading some data uh, consumers you can scale consumers up and down but the way how the consumer group coordinator in this case mommy bird uh, distributes uh, partitions or like worms if you want um, it, it has um, 
one-to-one -one relationship with consumer. If you have more than you have a 10 partitions and you have five consumer groups, uh, consumer consumers in consumer groups. So in this case, each individual consumer will uh, receive uh, one to many. So one consumer will receive uh, two partitions. If we have a 10 consumers in consumer group, um, then uh, the consumer, uh, each consumer will have uh, each partition to assigned to individual consumer. Um, so this is why uh, when you're trying to scale, uh, you need to figure out what's the number of topics um, that you have a uh, number of partitions, I'm sorry, inside the topic when you're trying to read and scale your your application. So when you're trying to read data. Um, because when you have, um, say, um, 11 consumers and 10 uh, partitions, in this case, uh, one of the uh, one of the baby birds, one of the consumers in consumer group will starve. So obviously, uh, I hope uh, I hope it makes a little bit uh, a little bit sense. Um, some of the interesting, uh, if you if you want to look into more uh, some advanced uh, scaling capabilities, I will uh, recommend to check some of the Kafka Summit talks. Um, one of the core committers to uh, Kafka Streams Ben. Um, Bill, uh, he did uh, the talk about sc scalability aspects. Um, but uh, yeah, so the, keep in mind that the topics, the number of uh, partitions inside the topics are uh, important. This is uh, this is where your because the partitions in Kafka are partition is a unit of is a unit of uh, scalability. So uh, when you're planning your uh, planning your topics when you're planning your uh, load you need to think about this how this data will be used how many part uh, consumers in consumer group can be used all right so um usually when we're talking about some people about stream processing they envision something like spark uh cluster or uh fling cluster something like that but it, it will require some of the um some of the additional um uh some additional computation right and when you come uh to your like data architect and asking hey um just thinking about to start new stream processing project and and uh, we'll try to figure out about where to run it how to run it and it will require some additional hardware to run another cluster but no the kafka streams actually provides you uh, with api um apis that uh allow you to write apps not the clusters and uh it's going to be api based clustering you don't need to have any um any coordinator for for that matter uh, that like the kafka has a keeper so in the, in your application you need to have something like this no you don't need to so it uses uh kafka as a coordinator and uh following this uh, consumer uh protocol so we programming against our business logic. So we're doing things that um, are important. So our streams app uh, runs on the separate process. Nothing runs inside broker. So broker, it's constant communication between uh, you know data right from Kafka. Um, we processing data and we're saving state uh, locally in your applications and uh, also we we replicating state of this application through Kafka. Uh, scaling also easy we're just starting another instance of this application and uh, from the question from uh, from Rahul um, Kafka um, consumer group ID or application ID in case of Kafka Streams, it's it's important uh, component that allows to group applications in a group of uh, um, of um, uh, many instances. So in this case, you can scale uh, scale out uh, processing inside your application. So Kafka topics are partitioned, so they can be split up to many brokers. And um, in the old days, you might want to might remember when you can, you know. Uh, have a consumer that reads the data from many partitions in order to compute them. Um, the consumer groups, remember this um, uh, nest where your baby birds, consumers are sitting, will be managed by consumer group controller, uh, which is a red bird, mommy bird that's sitting inside the Kafka broker. So everything you already have and uh, uh, Kafka streams API already uh, knows how to deal with it. So 
essentially when uh, we're talking about um, a real-time dashboard system that will be uh, feed the data from uh, from real-time stream you will have a processing uh, cluster where you write your job you submit your job and the result would be uh, written in this database so, so it's a basically typical um, typical uh, lambda architecture um, where your processing logic implemented inside your processing cluster now um, in order to uh, to work with this, your dashboard needs to constantly pulling um, pull, pulling this uh, uh, data from from data source. Your application, your dashboard application, needs to constantly pull this shared database. Or if you lucky, some of the databases this, these days support kind of like a reactive uh, approach. So in this case, you don't need to constantly pull, but still, it will require some additional um, element. So with Kafka streams, um, your application, you're focusing on your only application. You can build in dashboard within the application. And most importantly, um, again, from the question from your architect, the this like a mad scientist looking guy or like the, how the Charlie looks from um, the, the Dolly Sunny Philadelphia, that um, everything uh, needs to be deployed somewhere. Like we know that uh, from, from George Long that we know that many developers love to be in production. And this is ultimate place, uh, a good place where you want to end up with, right? But what's your production? Is it like Docker? It's, it's the some cloud providers um, and where, where, where you should run it. But since it's like a Java application, uh, we can say, yeah, <laughs> write once and run everywhere. But right now we're not saying this. Uh, we can just package it and uh, execute everywhere. So uh, the customers and the users in the community, they run their application in many places. Kubernetes, uh, Docker, uh, Mesosphere, uh, Google Cloud Platform, so far and so on. Now, let's talk, uh, let's let's uh, switch gears um, and uh, we we'll see what, what uh, Kafka Streams can do. Um, a lot of things. I'll discuss a little bit about um, the uh, desires of the framework, what you want to uh, look for in order to um, um, in, in order to write these kind of apps. So uh, we at Confluent, uh, we uh, contribute to Apache Kafka and uh, to uh, Kafka Streams. Kafka Streams is part of Apache Kafka. So it's it's uh, considered this as an embeddable, embedded framework that allows you to write stream processing applications. Um, there is a uh, integration with security. It's elastically scalable, full tolerant. It supports exactly one processing. Um, different uh, different ways how to event uh, event time processing uh, can be achieved. Uh, there's like event time or processing time or different uh, ways how to how to deal with this. Um, there is a DSL. Uh, which is uh, we're going to be focusing today, which is it provides a higher level API um, in order to write apps, but there's also processor API that allows you to write pretty much everything. Okay, so talk is cheap. Uh, let's see some code. So if you go to this uh, URL, uh, I will show it in, in the screen, cnfl.io, streams movie demo, uh, you will end up in, um, you will end up in, uh, uh, GitHub uh, repository. So let me uh, open and show uh, to you how it looks like. So um, this is GitHub repository called Demo Scene, and inside this Demo Scene project, there is Streams Movie Demo project. But everything that um, um, you want to do is here. Also, important link here is uh, the playbook. If you want to uh, repeat everything what I did today. Um, and also, I can use it as my um, <laughs> as my uh, some notebook. So if I forget something, I can always uh, have a quick look over here. Um, and it has all commands, what you need to do, so far and so on. No? Okay. So in order to um, in order to run this demo, so first of all, what is demo? So demo uh, in this in this demo, we'll be dealing with. Uh, uh, processing uh, movie ratings. So I have some some data that comes into um, into uh, into file. Uh, Alec, what's your uh, favorite movie? Um... Boy, you're asking tough questions. Let's okay. say the first Harry Potter. Let's see Die Hard. 
Die Hard is ultimate uh, Christmas movie, okay? Um, uh, uh, yeah, it has uh, some Die Hard information. Okay, let's see if we have some Harry Potter. Harry Potter and Deadly Hollows. Um, it's uh, not the first one, but the last one. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, yeah, this is first one, Sorcerer's Stone, right? Um, this is movie um, that was released in 2001, and um, Alan Rickman was there uh, because Alan Rickman also was in Die Hard. Um, so it's there's there, there's few um, uh, similarities, right? At least from from actor perspective. Okay, so the, the way how it looks like every line of this uh, file will represent a movie. <clears throat> It's a typical uh, situation when we have a separate or some kind of character that separates things. Um, uh, I can't use pipes because I want to use pipes to separate the actors. Um, and I would use just uh, columns. Yeah. Okay. This is um, this is my movies. Uh, I want to have uh, ability to see a real time ratings of uh, of this movie. So in on order to do. I uh, have some initial ratings. That's not that exciting. Rating ID, movie ID, and um, rating. If I will go to my, um, say, Harry Potter is a three movie ID uh, three to nine. And if I will switch here, and I'll try to find this is uh, uh, some ratings. Remember, I I am looking to second page. No, actually, it's, I think it's first one is movie ID. So we'll see. So um, in order to process this data, I need to have um, a quick a quick uh, uh, utility that will um, parse it. So it's very straightforward. Um, I need to have a, a parse rating. So first one, it was movie ID. Second one is a rating. So the first one, ah, zero one, it was a rating ID. And uh, the second one is movie ID. Um, so in terms of, um, in terms of, uh, serialization, in terms of storing the schemas and so far and so on. So now my, um, my initial data comes into like, uh, some separated text, uh, but in, uh, in order to other system to use this data, I want to have a schema. And, uh, Java is not only one, uh, language that, uh, some of the developers uh, might want to use so a java serialization uh, um, may be not very good choice for cr cross-platform <coughs> communication so um, since we do support a lot of things around avro so we will be using avro schema in order to represent our object so in my particular case like my movie schema looks like this um, it has all information movie id title a release year and so far and so on and most importantly, I don't even need to write any Java code. So I would use just the code generator to generate my, um, to my, uh, generate my, this is my uh, movie. It has all information required to do serialization, deserialization. And also we will be using schema registry uh, in order to store the schema. So other components like case SQL, for example, can reuse the schema and uh, uh, make uh, structural queries much more uh, simpler. All right. So uh, this is the idea. Um, and uh, from uh, from the previous conversation, from the previous talk, uh, we learned some of the tools, uh, Kafka console producer, Kafka console, um, Kafka topics uh, utility. So in this case, I will just, you know, I'm just do, uh, doing here air quotes. I will stream my movies data and my ratings data into, um, into Kafka. So, but before that, um, I need to I need to start. Um, I need to start my platform. As you remember from the, my previous um, previous session, I really uh, like uh, to use uh, um, the Confluent tool. So, so this tool uh, will allow me to uh, operate. Uh, um, with some components that um, I have in my in my system, so I will just start everything. Uh, I'll just do start. 
So in this case, um, it knows that for for every bits um, I need to use a keeper, I need to use Kafka. It will start schema registry. It will start key SQL server that we will be using um, uh, next. And um, next thing, what we do when once it will start, um, we will populate with this data, and also we will create some of the topics. Remember, I said that Kafka is is really cool. Um, is really cool because basically you don't need to, or Kafka Streams also very cool because you don't need to have anything else except the Kafka in order to, to store um, data. You don't need to have um, some uh, external database. So we will use this, for example, information uh, topic uh, for movies. We will be used to store parsed movies data in binary format. We will be using intermediate uh, ratings the sums. Uh, in our intermediate topics counts and the rating coverages and so far and so on. And the final result will be published in the rated movies uh, topic. In this case, I use a compacted topic. Uh, um, that compacted topic um, will keep data uh, only uh, latest and greatest uh, for particular key. So it's very suitable for um, type of uh, data that we have because we don't have uh, multiple uh, change events for the movies, even though it will have, we really care about latest and greatest event. So um, let me check. Yeah, we are um, starting up another component. And when I do screen sharing, my computer is uh, uh, will be a little bit slower um, in, in most cases. Uh, startup time takes just a few uh, few seconds. Now, um, in order you to uh, to use uh, start using Kafka Streams, and I'm going to uh, Streams project. Uh, remember, everything is in GitHub. You can also go and see uh, what you can do here. So uh, this is one dependency that you basically need. Uh, it's it's Org Apache Kafka Kafka Streams. Um, I'm using 2.0, uh, which uh, will be compatible with um, like Kafka 2.0 as well. Um, in this demo, I just use uh, monitoring interceptors so I can see that data is flows through and so far and so on. The cool thing is that Kafka Streams also comes with batteries included, meaning that it has a framework to do uh, 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 unit testing. Uh, if you will have a time, I will touch this uh, as well a little bit. And for some of the... Um, to 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 deal with some logging basically i just use uh, the lombok but uh, you not have to not have to use it but one dependency that you need to use here is just only one so core project um, that i use uh, will have uh, my uh, dependencies so it will have my um um uh, all these dependencies for, that I will uh, compile. Plus, it has um, uh, Avro compiler plugin that allows me to um, to build um, to, to generate my Java classes every time I change schema. Now I have my uh, uh, platform is up and running. So let's see what do we have here. And uh, one of the things that I want to show you that um, we can see uh, currently, uh, do we have any topics? So we don't have any topics. So that's why we need to populate with data. Um, I'm currently in my data, uh, in data folder. In my data folder, I have a special script that can uh, generate this. I'll just pull set. We'll set some of the raw data. So in this case, uh, we already saw this. Uh, let's populate this with, uh, with data. Um, so let's see if we have any topics here. Now we have uh, some of the uh, raw movies and let's see if we can see some of the data here. Uh, data was already populated uh, when it was created so we wouldn't see um, anything right now but uh, hopefully data was there. So I see these uh, lines that data was populated because uh, the, con the idea of streaming data is that you don't read the topic over and over and again. Uh, you just see that the data will be uh, will be there somehow. Uh, and let's see where's my. Uh, that was our initial load. Like we loaded all all, all this data over here. So 
um, data is there. So let's start um, let's start processing these things. So um, about uh, logic of this application. So let me show you how how does it works. So it's a Java again Java application, a very uh, very simple, very easy. And when we start doing things around uh, Kafka um, around Kafka streams. We start with Stream Builder. Stream Builder, this is an entry point to our stream application that allows us to build a topology. Topology, it is um, a description of the data flow, how we uh, start, uh, uh, you know, start doing things around this. So we start this Stream Builder, and based on the Fluent API, we um, we fulfilling this topology. So, for example, um, I'm taking, um, I'm passing this builder over here, and I'm taking. Uh, my uh, stream builder to create a stream that comes from the raw ratings uh, topic name. So we're starting with uh, uh, building a data pipeline with raw ratings. Um, so next thing is that uh, we um, building average ratings. We will get back here um, in uh, some time being. And uh, for another one for for movies, uh, we also have a movie stream that we take from raw movies topic name. Uh, and as you can see here, because we are um, dealing with some data that is outside of JVM that we need to bring over the wire, we need to also specify a serializer and a deserializer. So in this particular case, we can say that we creating a stream from Kafka topic that will be consumed using serializer for key. It will be using long as a serializer and for the value to using string as a serializer. And in order to do um, uh, next things to um, to perform, as you can see, uh, return method here returns a case stream with uh, key uh, long and value a string. So let's see what we're doing next with it. So um, in order to start uh, using these movies, we need to parse it. So um, as you can see here, we take um, a stream that we're creating from Kafka topic and passing through um, stream Java streams like API. So we do map values. Um, um, and if you uh, you can see here, if I will create a variable, like intermediate variable, um, this method returns a um, another stream. So all this operation that we can do similar um, similar things how we're doing with Kafka streams. So we have uh, we do a you know cascading uh, type of uh, operation. So each method, so my uh, my values will create another stream that will have different types. Values will be um, integer, uh, sorry, long and um, I'm sorry, key would be long and the value would be movie because we parse to this movie and from uh, our uh, parser that has a string as input value we're returning uh, returning movie object so now we can start operating with um, um, with uh, with types now next thing is that because on the very beginning we didn't uh, spend much time on figuring out where we need to place it um, and uh, what kind of partition needs to be uh, will store some some value because we just dump data into Kafka topic. Um, it, this is usual case, usual usual scenario where the people just saying, hey, I'll just bring data in uh, and after that, um, you guys will figure out. Um, so this is what we do. And that's okay, we have a raw input so we can always uh, change the way how we're processing data. Well, for example, parser will change, but the raw data will contain some extra information, so far and so on. So it's, so it's useful, start with very raw data. Now, we, for purpose of our application, because we will be doing a joining of our ratings in our movies, uh, we need to perform operation that called rekeying or repartitioning. So in this case, uh, data uh, of same uh, movie ID will end up on the same uh, uh, partition as um, as a rating uh, rating movie ID, because remember. Uh, if uh, I didn't show you that, because we also do parsing, and after that we also do rekeying. So in this case, Kafka streams create intermediate stream for us that will contains a stream key stream uh, where key will be movie ID and value will be rating. In um, in our movie, we will have same uh, same thing. 
right? So in this case, we will um, uh, produce another stream that will have a movie as movie ID and movie as a value. And we write this into movie topics, uh, uh, topic with movies. Uh, so let me show you, I can start um, inspecting when I will start this application. Um, data will appear here, so you will see how it goes. Um, so the next thing is that uh, uh, in order to me to explain this to you, I need to use a couple more slides. Um, and uh, we will talk a little bit uh, nerdy talk that about a special theory of uh, relativity of streams and tables. All right, so um, when you're dealing with tables inside the tables you usually store a state or something like and um, you do in certain table in 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 this table you will have information about current state of your bank account for example now um underneath uh or typical database there's always some some sort of um um log that captures all operation and it generates a stream of change events so in this case we take the um when we do in certain table uh underneath we produce stream of changes and when we take this stream of changes we actually can recreate um every um we can recreate uh state from 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 this one so Alec, have you ever uh, have you ever um, saw the situation when you killed some of the databases and after that you start these databases and you see that okay so i'm restoring uh, something from my transactional log have you ever seen this yeah uh, of course of course yeah. this is <laughs> the real process Ma many times many times we drop uh, databases or like you killed the database process without uh, you know graceful shutdown yeah, uh, that's how any uh, backup works, right? You keep yeah. a log of everything that happened, and then you have a snapshot, and then you gradually recreate the state. Exactly, exactly. So this idea was available for a very long time for uh, for many uh, for for many tools or for many systems and so far and so on. Uh, same idea was borrowed into uh, the stream processing thing. So uh, let me explain this in a more um, like in intuitive way, I would say, right? So we have a table when we do inserts, uh, we do insert uh, the Gwen Shapiro's name here, uh, Matthias uh, Sachs um, and the Victor Gamov. This is table that represents state on each individual step, uh, but stream itself, uh, stream itself will just have uh, change events that happens. So we just did the uh, uh, upsert, right? We just did update. We just insert an update. Uh, but it, in in uh, our stream of events, uh, change events, it changed the um, it uh, changed just the value. And on the other side, based on the stream information, uh, we able to uh, 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 restore state of this database. So essentially, this is how this is how any replication tool works. Um, you know, it listens uh, transaction log of database uh, and transfers this over the wire and recreates table structure on the other side. So same idea taken for calculus, but why? Why we need to do this? Because we need to represent the state uh, of, uh, remember I was talking about Kafka streams is a stream processing uh, with a stateful computation. So we need to have a state of a certain things in order to uh, move forward to do some, I don't know, joins and aggregations so far so on. But, you know, uh, usual, uh, the quote from Murphy is that uh, are you, this is, like table that uh, you think you're querying. Um, and uh, let's let's see how we can uh, uh, how we can do that. So um, because in uh, in uh, in my application, I really don't care about the stream of changes of the movies because I really care about um, a current state or current state of values inside my movie. So I can have this abstract concept called table. So it will uh, materialize uh, this as a store. Remember I said Kafka Streams has a built-in uh, database and this built-in database will run alongside of your, your process. So you have ability to not only uh, consume the stream from, um, from Kafka Topic, but also materialize it 
as um, as a table, and uh, we we're not gonna be covering today. But uh, there is API that allows you to query this state, so you don't need to um, like go all the way and replay all events from Kafka. You can just uh, call a local state once it's uh, rehydrated. So I will collect my uh, movies information in this local store now. And the last thing uh, here is that, okay, we have a um, uh, movies, we have a rating. So now let's do, uh, let's do joins or uh, how we can, uh, how we can join this. So in this case, how we can get rated movies and tables. Uh, okay. So uh, in this case, we uh, perform join. We have information about movie streams. We take uh, not movie streams, movie table now because we we have a state. And same thing for uh, average rating. So where we where we took it, uh, rating average. Yep. So um, this is interesting comment you can uh, find and educate yourself. Uh, it's kind of like extracurricular material, but essentially what happens is that some of the operations are required to perform in one step um, rather than um, in multiple steps. So operations like average can be done as a two operations, but in this case, it um, it will uh, emit uh, some of the extra information in in, uh, in the output stream that might potentially introduce uh, duplicates. So I was I was uh, talking to um, some of the developers um, of Kafka Streams, and you can also talk to developers of the Kafka Streams. I will put the link to Slack. Uh, we have a, a Slack channel about uh, Kafka Streams, and you can ask any other questions. But essentially, what we do here. In order to perform our count and some um, uh, like aggregation where we have a, a average rating, we need to uh, uh, perform count and uh, sum in the one step. So in this particular case, we're using this uh, function called aggregate. That uh, first parameter of this function will accept initial value for aggregate. In my case, I will have this class called count because um, you know we in Java in Scala you will have something like a tuple two, um, and uh, in the, in this case you will use like this this kind of class. This is a typical pattern. Um, in Spark, for example, you will see two, tuple two, tuple three, tuple four, up to them, I don't know, like many tuples. But in this case, I, I want to be very explicit and demonstrate what I uh, what I actually have here. So it has two properties, count and sum, which is essentially tuple, right? So you have a value one and value two. Um, and uh, I instantiate this as an empty um, as an empty container. And next thing, every time when I will get uh, this. Uh, uh, um, new entries in my in my stream of ratings. I will uh, do aggregation for counts. Uh, so in this case, I will just do uh, increment of counts, and also I'm adding some. So as a result, it will generate a a, a, um, a key table because again, we need to have only state. We have a previous result that will include um, a previous step. We have new data. We incremented count. We incremented value. And on the last step, we want to do uh, average ratings. So in this case, we take stream or table in this case uh, of um, counts and sums, and we perform a map uh, function where we can um, do a division of sum into counts. Now, and the last thing is do uh, do join. Basically, this is uh, the hardest thing is done. And the uh, last thing is to do uh, join. So in this particular case, there's a joiner function that we can pass the way that explains how, how Kafka streams can join uh, to uh, to entries. So this join uh, joiner will um, uh, receive a key um, for, because they will be on the same uh, on the same uh, uh, partition. They would be on the different topics though, but on the same partition. And in this case, it will end up on the same uh, Kafka console, uh, Kafka consumer. Uh, movie, this was the part of the first stream and the uh, uh, rated movie, this is a result of the join. Now, uh, sorry, in this case, it's gonna be value and uh, movie. So um, the, the, because it's a value joiner, we, we, because we, we, we consider uh, that key would be the same, so we need to join only values. So we 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 joining this average rating uh, topic uh, with uh, movie ID information and the joiner, and we have a special type uh, rated movie. Uh, let me show you quickly his um, 
like his um, structure. This is schema has a, a Java class rating that has movie ID and rating. That's it. This is what we want to have. Um, and uh, so let me start this application so we will see uh, that something is actually going on. Uh, while it's starting, so let me show how this... Um, so once we created this topology, the builder uh, will create. Um, and in this case, you can also have a description of the topology in order to do some, you know, you can do visualization of this. There's tools that allow uh, you to visualize, visualize topology. And this is how you start your Kafka stream app. That's it. So pretty much um, um, you create in Kafka streams and you, you do the start. And you constantly, uh, this will... Uh, this will this application will be constantly running so uh if you want to stop it you uh, have a shutdown hook here so let's see if it actually does something um also interesting enough that uh, uh kafka streams uh created some of the intermediate topics um um to uh, to support this fault tolerance if one of the nodes will go down some of the data will be replicated from kafka um and as you can see now, topic has information. So in this case, uh, um, it has uh, movie information and uh, everything that comes here uh, that will be information about movie, so far and so on. Okay, now we want to see a uh, result of uh, uh, average um, rated movies. So if we can do and see inspect of the topic, uh, hopefully data will appear here. So, um, and in order to uh, to inspect this again, uh, probably processing already happened because we process all data from beginning, but uh, in order to um, in order to get new data, uh, we need to you know constantly generate stream of raining. So if you're not, I don't need to go and the manually um, uh, uh, manually create all these ratings. I can just simply go and um, create a, uh, I have a script that generates, but essentially it's like uh, some of the, um, um, uh, I have a project called loader and inside this loader, I have array uh, raw movies generator, which basically connects to my Kafka topics um, and uh, will have um, generate some raw ratings based on certain rules, personal pre preferences, right? For example, uh, <coughs> Die Hard, Little Weapon, some of the good movies uh, from my childhood uh, will uh, will get this, uh, they, they will pop up more 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 often uh, in, uh, in order, in this like uh, auto-generation uh, pr procedure. So let me uh, start this uh, procedure uh, that will simply generate ratings and topics and we will see how the data will uh, flow through um, through our topic. I remember, we have this Kafka Streams application constantly running, constantly consuming this topic and we see some data start, start uh, producing over here um, and uh, some of the new data on rated movies, remember what we mentioned here, we have this movie title, uh, movie year, some new messages arrive uh, and ratings and uh, so far, so far and so on. Okay, so some of the data is 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 floating here. So let me stop this generator. Um, also, cool thing is that in um, in uh, in my uh, in my uh, dashboard, I will see uh, the the statistics about uh, how data is uh, cons consumed. Uh, for example, this is like first batch, how we can, you know, read everything. And the second one, how we start consuming data. So we know like how much data we consume. And we also we can see consumer like, meaning that how far behind. So in this particular case, I generated too many ratings and my applications just, you know, continue uh, crunching these numbers. Um, and again, thanks for uh, Google Hangouts that... Um, um, constantly in my CPU, that uh, my application will be, you know, slowly consuming all these messages, and uh, uh, I can see visually, I can see how far behind my Kafka Streams application from consuming. So, in in my particular case, we're interested in topic uh, uh, raw ratings, right? So, and uh, we can see. Um, 
uh, we can see like how fast we can see, but we, we, we catch up quite quickly. See, it's already 23,000 messages behind. So, um, now we consumed all messages. So, so far, so, so far, so good. Now, last thing, uh, last but not least, uh, very quickly. So how to, uh, how to go from here? So one of the guys, uh, he, he's asking, uh, Rams, he was asking, okay, so I'm kind of like, a has to, um, I'm, ha I'm, 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 I'm required to learn Java to do stream processing or like Scala. If you, I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to break up anything about Scala, but still, yeah, you know, if you data engineer, you kind of have to uh, learn Scala. Uh, but like, how, um, how can I do this without learning um, uh, some other programming languages? And the case SQL, it's another um, kind of, uh, abstraction on top of uh, Kafka streams that perform uh, uh, helps to perform a stream uh, processing, but allows you to have very uh, nice and a very concise uh, uh, language, which pretty much every data engineer know uh, supposedly, right? Um, so in this case, we can execute uh, KSQL from command line from UI. I will show in UI. Um, you can also execute this over REST. So this is how you can perform stream processing uh, to, in applications that not written in Java. For example, you have Node.js with dashboard that uh, writes some of the data and you can use KSQL uh, backend to do uh, stream processing. You submitting SQL query and you can query a result through a REST and display this in your dashboard in, in Node.js. It's pretty cool. Uh, also, you can just deploy SQL file uh, with uh, KSQL server. So in this case, um, this is um, how you're writing a uh, stream processing application. Just write SQL, uh, package this with, uh, submit this to KSQL server. And uh, in the headless mode, you don't need to interactively interact with the server. So it's a really cool uh, capabilities. Now, how you can interact with, with Kafka? Kafka, one Kafka rules them all. So uh, your uh, Kafka Streams application reads data, processes data, because um, it has some of the logic, for example, parsing logic uh, that is built in in Java. We can use this into um, our Kafka Streams application to perform um, uh, perform computation parsing and uh, write data back to Kafka, and we use KSQL to do some 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 interesting stuff. So, for example. Um, you can do some some aggregates as well on the KSQL, and also um, they scale um, they scale uh, in, independently. Some uh, you will see some of the load that you can uh, perform on uh, in the Kafka Streams application uh, be higher because you need to do like some processing, you need to do parsing, so far and so on. Uh, in the KSQL, it do much simpler, so you can uh, you can scale those um, pretty 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 independent. Now. KSQL also has a, a fault tolerance uh, capabilities. Um, uh, the, the messages state will be migrated and uh, processed through uh, through Kafka topics. Um, and we also can um, increase number of nodes. So in this case, state also will be uh, rebalanced. And um, uh, once we bring new instance of KSQL, this data uh, will be bring back to, and a load will be distributed across these KSQL nodes. Now, uh, uh, remember I saw the, uh, I told you that this is kind of, you will see the one, one of the most important slides. This is the most important slide to understand this uh, ecosystem. So we have Kafka and the, for the simple use cases, uh, like you just need to do simple pops up, uh, you, you read the messages, you need to do some uh, subscribing, pulling so far or so on, you, you start with consumer and producer. You write a framework that can do same processing. You start with consumer and producer. So next thing is that uh, you want to focus in on logic and you want to have higher level abstracts to do uh, stream processing. So in this case, you start with Kafka Streams, which event essentially built uh, on top of producer consumer API and provides you with uh, Java, familiar Java API that allows you to, um, to do some of, the, um, some, some of the operations. And with KSQL uh, that is built on top of Kafka Streams, you have higher level language to uh, perform certain operations. So, um, and uh, with your uh, flexibility and ease of use um, comes, uh, if you want to have flexibility, you go on the raw consumer producer. If you go with Kafka Streams, uh, it's kind of like a balance because there is a uh, DSL, uh, there is a, um, the uh, processor API, 
uh, and uh, ksql can be extended if you still know java you can use uh, udfs which is kind of user defined functions uh, that allow you to uh, perform some additional information them so for example you want to train your model um, your uh, machine learning model from some ksql query you can do that you just write this udf that can do uh, this kind of operation so let's quickly see uh, before we go before we go uh, let's uh, quickly see how the ksql can help us here um, and uh, for that i will just simply copy um, um, the query editor uh, we'll just what, what we're going to be doing here um, in my control center i have a, a tab called ksql you see um, and uh, i can create a stream in order me to perform this i will use uh rated movies this is going to be a stream that i will be using so a cool thing about uh, um, uh, the ksql and control center i can actually go here and uh, it, it will investigate based on our structure based on avro so this is why i remember i mentioned this avro i think is, is also important um i can create a um create a stream but in this particular case uh, I will go with a table because I need to have just the latest and greatest result so in this case I have um, rated movies um, and I can say it's going to be Avro so or I can it can be JSON it can store uh, it will create uh, the representation that will use JSON or Avro so let's do Avro um, key is movie ID and uh, this is pretty much it so this is how I define this table um, this is how I define this table in uh, in the key SQL this is uh, this is what you can do here just copy and, and paste in query editor I will show this in a moment uh create a table and if i go and do um uh we'll do tune 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 uh, okay so my query editor let me see if i do uh select uh, query uh you know the web development is uh is difficult something <laughs> something is uh, is is it went uh, very funky uh, let me let me try to refresh it. Maybe maybe it's uh, some of the um, outtakes of uh, running this in uh, in the screen sharing mode. Um, hmm. Interesting. Um, but uh, we can do same thing. It's never the screen sharing mode. It's never the screen sharing mode. It's a type of software. It's never yeah. the software yeah. Local or conferences. Uh, we do HTTP. So remember what I mentioned, this is kind of, it's causes REST API. Um, so I can connect to this through, you see I'm connected here. I can show, uh, show tables. Um, oops, obviously, SQL. And uh, if I will do this kind of thing, uh, uh, my so in this case, particular, I would say uh, I want to see ratings for um, um, from um, Little Weapon. So if you see, this is current rating of Little Weapon. And if I will start my uh, data generator, uh, Alec, what was the uh, your movie? You said it's Gary Potter. So let's uh, let's do this uh, Gary Potter. Let's find this again. Uh, movie date in um, Harry Potter is a three two nine. Um, so we'll do movie three two nine. Three two nine. Uh, we should get a rating for Harry Potter and uh, Sorcerer's Stone. And uh, this rating won't change because I don't have it in my generator. Um, but uh, if I will get back to my um, my little weapon uh, example, and I will rerun my uh, generator again. So in this case, uh, you will see how uh, state. So right now, the current state here in the, is this. And uh, in this, this is how the, the rating is changing. Um, see? So this is uh, 
this is this is pretty much it so this is how it works and uh you know data is uh, constantly flowing so let's see if i do have uh my uh data flow still um where's my data consumer like for films yeah so uh my, my messages are piling up um and uh data is generating so everything is cool everything is working so kafka streams allows you just simply um just have this like a jar perform uh you know java java jar application to do a stream processing also if you really in the spring world and the spring uh, type of buff uh, i do have examples of uh, kafka streams integrations with uh, spring framework and the Spring Boot in the same project. So uh, check this out, how you can do that. Uh, it's a fantastic work from uh, from uh, Pivotal team uh, who helped develop this integration. And uh, last but not least, um, I would say that I want to say thank you very much again for this opportunity to speak in front of you. Uh, we are hiring. I don't know I like if I can say that <laughs> here, but yeah, we are hiring. Uh, if you have um, uh, some some cool, if you want to build some cool stuff with us, uh, just come and um, and join um, the company. Find something that you would be interested. My Twitter is jmussa, and uh, you can send me a. Um, traditional uh type of message uh, through uh, through email uh thank you for your time uh, uh we went slightly over hour but uh i think it's i good. think this is fine i think this was a very interesting session and i learned stuff and we have questions we have plenty of questions uh, so if you're not running away yet we can go through them currently let's do um, let's do two questions and the rest of it we can take offline um Oh my God! Now you're like this is uh, complex. Okay, I will ask the latest questions because mm -hmm. uh, because these are the most relevant to the content that you just showed us. So, uh, can you create a KSQL not from already merged data like created movie stream, but from raw data, like creating two KSQL tables and simply joining them together and then grouping? So KSQL uh, right now uh, doesn't have um, kind of like this, uh, the, 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 so you cannot just do like inserts as, as you do in, uh, um, in, in in traditional SQL. So we would uh, rather recommend to use like connector framework, for example, that will pull data into Kafka. Um, and um, you, can, uh, you can create a um, derived stream. So if you have some topic, you can create a uh, one stream from this topic, and after that you can have um, you can create stream as a select from the topic. So you can have a uh, two types of queries. One query is a con um, um, continuous query. Another query is a um, uh, persistent query. Right. So continuous query will work until you close your screen, uh, but uh, a persistent query will be constantly running in the con context of your um, your ksql server but um similar similar thing that you have in uh, sql um this is something that we're working on but uh, it's currently not available we recommend to use connect to bring data in and take data out excellent and not the latest question but which is this one is interesting for me myself so uh, <laughs> sergey is asking is there any optimizer uh, or how ksql knows which way of joining is better yeah um this is a fantastic question from sergey i will um i will send you a couple links so first of all there was a talk in the kafka summit where um uh, Hojar Jafur, one of the um, uh, creators of uh, KSQL, he's talking exactly about these topics and he's explaining how um, optimizer works and how uh, query plan is is calculated. Um, and the second one uh, in related to joins, um, uh, Nick Durden from uh, from the KSQL uh, uh, core team and the streams team, um, he did a Kafka Summit talk on explaining. Um, uh, join semantics and how different joins are working like left join right join inner join these kind of things uh it, these talks will explain a lot of things to you so i will uh, share these links uh with alec and he will distribute those as well excellent so our two questions are up uh yep. i i really hope that you will find a moment to go into the live session channel on the slack 
uh, there are a bunch of messages which uh, tag you. So yeah. you should have received those notifications and you can answer those. There were also questions about the uh, slides from the Kafka summit about the scale in Kafka and so on. Uh, I'm sure there will be some interesting conversation to right. have. Right, yeah, I will, um, I will be available. I will log into Slack channel um, and we can continue conversation here. Uh, but uh, there is another event is waiting for me, so I have to go for airport. Uh, it was a delightful uh, um, evening for you, uh, afternoon for me, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to learn more uh, about some of the Kafka aspects, for example, we didn't cover anything about Kafka Connect at all, but which is also kind of huge, huge period. Left your comments. Let I like know that it's something that you would be interested in in, in learning. So um, sorry, I like I'm doing the the sh shameless yes. uh, promotion of my uh, of my future talks. Uh, thank you so much for uh, being with us, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you around the internet. And I'll try to answer all your questions as they go. Thank you, Victor. It was a great session. I hope everyone enjoyed this. If you have any feedback, find us at, at VirtualJack or me personally at, at Shalaev. Or if you have questions to Victor, at uh, Gamusa uh, on the internet or find him in the Slack channel for the Virtual Jack. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. And until the next time, bye-bye. Thank you. Take care.